Welcome to Gil Reads Comics. This past week was an exciting one for fans of Buffy the Vampire Slayer because Boom Studios just released issue one of their Buffy the Vampire Slayer reboot. For those of you that don't know the background for this comic, for years, Dark Horse published Buffy comics that continued from the TV series that originally aired on Fox. However, recently, Fox pulled the license from Dark Horse and decided to publish a new series through Fox's own comic publishing company, Boom Studios. I'm assuming they did this in preparation for the fact that Fox is actually going to be rebooting or in some form continuing the Buffy TV series as a TV show. Talking about the comic though, the approach they've decided to take here is to essentially retell the story of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She's back in high school just like she was back in the first couple of seasons of the original TV series. Buffy's in high school, Willow's there, Xander is there, Giles is there, all the familiar characters, except it takes place in 2019. So it's as if they just created the show today, and what would that storyline look like? Right off the bat, reading this comic felt like watching an episode of Buffy that I, I accidentally skipped from season one or two. So it fits right in, striking that same tone of teen angst, humor and action when it comes to vampire slang. It also does a great job of channeling the voice of Joss Whedon, even though he's not writing the comic this time around. He is consulted as part of the story, but the dialogue feels like something he could have written. This really comes through when you see that the characters are portrayed just like they were on the original series. For example, one of the conversations that takes place early on in the issue between Xander and Willow goes as follows. We join them mid-conversation with Xander asking Willow, so you don't think I'd win in a fight? Willow replies, with a kangaroo? No, Xander. And Xander answers, rude. Feels like dialogue that could have been taken right out of the show. So it's capturing the Joss Whedon voice and it's accurately reflecting the same characterization of these characters that we saw back on the original TV series. Another thing I'll point out is that oftentimes these licensed comics that are trying to portray a story from a different medium, they try too hard to capture the likeness of the actors and it starts to create a sort of uncanny valley feel where all of the movement seems very stilted, as if the artist was looking at pictures of the original actors and just trying to mimic those. But kudos to the artist for Buffy the Vampire Slayer here, Dan Mora, he did a great job, and the characters feel natural, the movement all looks natural, but they still look like the actors, you know, from 20, 25 years ago. So the bottom line is that if you're not a Buffy fan, and you're just looking for a comic that'll get you out of the superhero mold, you're looking for a comic that at least appears to be going for some depth. It cares more about the characters than it does for the action. It strikes an interesting balance between drama, action, and comedy. If you're looking for something like that, at least based on issue one, it's something worth checking out. If you're a fan of the show, this comic is tailor-made for you. It's trying to give you more of what you loved, and it's something you haven't had for a long time. Because even if you were reading the Dark Horse comics, those were continuing the continuity from the original series. So you were seeing an older Buffy that's been through a lot. If you want more of classic Buffy when she was still in high school and still figuring things out, this will give that to you. But it doesn't totally feel like you're treading over just familiar territory. It's kind of similar to if you read the original Spider-Man and you know all about Spider-Man and then you went to read Ultimate Spider-Man. You're seeing a lot of the same ingredients, but everything's just a little bit different. And even if you think you know where something's going, you'll be curious to see how are they gonna handle it this time? How are they gonna do things differently? There are already a couple of examples and just in issue one where we see things like characters that we know from the show being introduced much earlier in the story than they were on the series. One of the things that I was most curious and somewhat concerned about going into this new series is can this series make us feel something the way that the original Buffy TV series did? 
That show was fun, it was funny, it was entertaining, but it could make you feel joy, it could make you feel sadness. It did a great job of really making us care. Can this comic pull off the same thing? And I'll say that in issue one, there was a moment that really was touching, and it gave me a lot of hope that they'll be able to accomplish that in this series. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into spoilers, and we can go ahead and do that right now. So if you haven't read the comic, I recommend you go do that and then come back and watch the rest of this video. Just a few spoilery reactions. I mentioned earlier that we saw some things play out a little differently in issue one, you know, this time around versus the original show. Specifically, what I was thinking about is Anya. That's a character who didn't show up until season three of the show. And here in issue one, she's introduced as sort of a shopkeeper that sells mystical items to vampires. I don't know if it's exclusively vampires, but that's what we saw in this issue. We also see Drusilla show up at the end. Drusilla appears as sort of an opponent to Anya, so it's unclear what side Anya's on here. Is she going to be in a villainous role? My guess is that she'll be in sort of a gray area, similar to how she was on the show, kind of an antagonist, sort of on the line, and then slowly move towards becoming one of the Scooby gang. So curious to see how that plays out. Curious to see if they accelerate that timeline, considering she showed up much earlier in the comics than she did in the show. Uh, also interesting is throughout the issue, we see narration, and it's written in this blue, these blue text boxes with white text. And naturally, at least when I was reading it, I assumed that's Buffy's inner dialogue. We find out right at the end of the issue that that was actually Xander typing on his computer, I guess a journal, diary, I don't know if it's a blog or just a private journal he's keeping for himself, but that's an interesting decision that they made because in a way that makes it so this comic is being told from Xander's point of view, which would change things up a little bit from the show. Now, I don't know if that's going to continue into the following issues or maybe they'll change up the point of view from issue to issue. Maybe some will be Buffy, some will be Willow, uh, and that also makes me wonder if we're even going to always have inner dialogue, or will that only be the case when there's an incontinuity explanation for it? So rather than having characters just think and we get to read their thoughts, we'll only get that in cases like Xander, where they're actually writing their thoughts down or talking it out with someone. And then I have to tell you the moment that I was talking about. I said there was one moment in this comic that I found to be touching, it made me feel something, and gave me hope for this series going forward. And that would be the fact that we know Buffy is struggling to make friends here in Sunnydale. We know from the inner dialogue that Xander wants to make more friends. And there's a moment where Willow slips a note to Buffy in class that essentially says, come hang out with me and Xander tonight. And the smile that Buffy gives Willow, just that moment where you know that they're becoming friends, I thought that was great, and it gives me hope that this comic can accomplish at least a fraction of what the show was able to accomplish. One last thing I'll say, this sort of leads into a little bit of an out there theory I have. This issue is called Welcome Back to the Hellmouth. Overall, you could read this issue and know nothing about the original series, and it works. You'll just miss a few callbacks and a few references here and there, but it's written as an entirely new story that doesn't require any previous knowledge. But that title, Welcome Back to the Hellmouth, that title is geared directly to people who are already familiar with the story and this continuity. You've been at the Hellmouth before, welcome back. Going into this series, part of me wondered if maybe this reboot is a little bit of a trick, where it's not entirely a reboot. Meaning, maybe we'll see a twist later on that explains that this reboot actually takes place in the same continuity as the original Buffy. That could be we're looking at an alternate universe, and maybe at some point we catch a glimpse of the original Buffy and her continuity, or maybe there's a mystical explanation for the reboot where somehow these characters have been sort of de-aged, their minds have been wiped, and the world has been changed in some way. And eventually we'll find out that this is the original Buffy, but somehow her timeline's been rolled back. 
I'm not saying I actually subscribe to this theory, but it's something I was thinking about going into the series, and then I saw that title, Welcome Back to the Hellmouth, which depends on you knowing what the Hellmouth is, and it made me wonder, maybe they'll do that. And I at least wanted to put that out there, so if that twist happens, I can say, you heard it here first. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm glad that I was, I was worried about this new uh, Buffy series, because I was a big fan of the show, and I'd love to continue watching that character. So I'm glad to see the comic, at least based on issue one, seems to be pretty good. So check back the next few weeks when issue two comes out. I'll get a review up and we'll see if they can keep it up.